What's up, YouTube? So I had a sound design request recently about creating a didgeridoo sound, and I think this type of sound is particularly hard to create with synthesis. However, using real world things, we might be able to kind of like fake that kind of like sound that you could get from a didgeridoo. So while looking around my house, I found this tube, uh, which, you know, you get foil on, I guess you get various types of things, uh, paper and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you get longer tubes, uh, I guess those would make more of a realistic didgeridoo sound. However, I think sampling this and changing the pitch and all sorts of things, we could get some pretty decent results. So yeah, I think let's try be creative today and try create a didgeridoo sound out of this cardboard tube and just as a little bonus i think these foil the crinkling of this foil could actually make some pretty interesting atmospheres and that kind of thing so yeah let's dive in and have a look So as I immediately started blowing on the cardboard tube, I thought, you know, this could actually make a pretty decent didgeridoo sound. Maybe we could like pitch it down and play with a sampler or something like that. So I was thinking we could actually load this into phase plant and try like synthesize the sound with a sampler oscillator in there, maybe pitch it around and all sorts of stuff to try like get a realistic didgeridoo sound using the cardboard tube. I thought that would be pretty interesting. Um, I've got some stuff here. We can try and make some ambient stuff using granular stuff maybe um, that like foil crinkly sound is pretty good. So yeah, let's just get creative today. Here, I think I want to start off with this didgeridoo thing. I think that would be pretty interesting. So I think first and foremost, what we can do is process the sound a little bit. Let's just make sure that we're getting it right at the beginning of the sound. So we can snap to zero crossing and just uh, go something like this. Let's zoom in a little bit more just to make sure we're like bang on the spot there. There we go. Um, then we can snap to grid, move it to the beginning of the bar like this. Do we have uh, a, like a stable pitch there or can we maybe use very audio to like flatten that pitch a little bit more so we can get a slightly more stable sound that we can pitch around using the sampler. So let's just bounce the selection that we have here. Um, I actually want to fade out just to make sure it goes to exact zero over there. And then let's just bounce this out. So here I want to double click on this. Uh, we can jump over to the very audio and let's just see what happens here. So looks like we've got a bit of variation here. It doesn't quite go above the one or two semitones mark, except right at the end and right at the beginning here. Although this is the transient, so often there's not much, you know, I don't want to edit that too much because that's going to destroy that kind of like pluckiness of the sound itself, which we may want to retain. Here, you see it's kind of got this wobbly effect. What we can do is we can use this straighten curve to straighten that pitch. We might not want to go all the way down to complete flat because that might sound a little bit robotic, but we can just select the note that we want to adjust. So for example, we don't want to adjust this first transient. So we just select this last one over here. Cool, that sounds good. Let's render this out and we can pop it into phase plant. Press P because that will um, add our locators to the exact points of the sample and we can go audio mix down. Cool, let's jump into phase plant. So here I wanna jump into samples. Um, I think I rendered it into glitch and then I called it cardboard dig. So here what we can do is I actually just wanna pop in a tuner onto the actual channel so we can check out what pitch the root note is. We could have actually checked in uh, very audio, but we're going to be playing around with all sorts of settings here, which might adjust the pitch. So just tuning it down one octave once it's loaded into the sampler already sounds really, really good, almost like a didgeridoo. We could add some further processing and all sorts of things here just to kind of like fatten out that sound. But here, like I said, what I want to do is I want to tune this to the root note so we can figure out exactly what pitch this is so we can pitch it to specific tracks and that kind of thing. So what I want to do is choose a loop points over here. So what that's going to do is it's going to loop the part when we hold the key. So it looks like the sample is at around A flat. So what we can do is I want to adjust this root so that it's when we play a C, the tuner spits out a C. So A flat would be G sharp.
that is amazing. It's almost got like a pan flute type of sound in the higher frequencies and like a kind of uh, didgeridoo type of sound in the low frequencies. So we can actually take this two ways. Um, I think first let's go for the didgeridoo type sound because that's what we were looking for originally. So with a didgeridoo, often there are these kind of like harmonics that shift because of the way that you kind of like move your mouth while you're playing that. So what we can do is we can kind of give a filter a little bit of resonance and then add a LFO to the kind of filter to try to simulate that kind of like moving harmonic that you sometimes get with a didgeridoo sound. That sounds awesome. So with this one, what could be cool is if we give it like like some envelope to control like the pitch. So we can do like an octave shift to give it like almost like a note flourish type of thing. So let's set this to uh, one shot mode and then let's set this to modulate the semitones by 12. We also want to set this to unipolar mode. <laughs> We could even maybe draw in a sequence. So let's set this uh, to snap to 12. And then we can actually draw in the squares like to a specific notes in the scale. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe that that came from a fucking cardboard tube. Okay, let's check out some of this other stuff. I think this like foil crinkly sound could actually make a really cool riser or sound effect like atmosphere type of thing. So I'm actually really keen to play around with this one as well. Um, this is just the sound before we actually dive into face plant and start messing it up. Wow, that is really cool. It's got a little bit of subs uh, coming through though. So what I want to do is I actually just want to put on a filter before we render this out. And let's just, again, uh, snap to zero crossings. I want to make sure I get a fade in and a fade out because I think some of these sounds can be a little bit too crinkly. Uh, I think they should be good. We can always like fine tune it within Faceplant. That's why I really like using Faceplant for these kind of like sample editing type of um, tasks because you can really like fine tune the loop points and all sorts of stuff. It's one of the more uh, the the one of the cooler sampler editors in a kind of wavetable synth.
Oh, that's cool. Let's put a single macro to control the semitones here, <coughs> the frequency shift. And what we can do is we can actually reduce the length of the loop points as we rise that macro. So that's going to create this kind of glitchy retrigger type effect. Oh, that's cool. So we can use that either as like a downlifter or an uplifter. Uh, let's call this crinkly foil <coughs> uplifter. Awesome, that is about it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm gonna be uploading these faceplant presets to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you wanna know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And yeah, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.